Hello and welcome to another PolyX video. My name is Keith from 3D Scanners and today we've been invited to Nikon Metrology here in Derby and joining us today is Lucy Parsons. Yeah, thanks for joining us Keith. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm one of the sales account managers. Um, I look after the laser scanning and the laser radar products underneath uh, Nikon Metrology. So we have a number of different um, divisions underneath Nikon Metrology. So we have X-ray, um, industrial microscopy, vision systems, but I look after laser scanning and laser radar. Excellent. So what are you going to show us today? So today we're going to look at the, the laser radar. So we're here in uh, our demo facility in Derby. Uh, we have the laser radar behind us set up with a, a ro robot system so we can show it in an automated manner as well. Excellent. See you in action. So Lucy, what do we have here? So uh, this is the APDIS. So the APDIS is the new name for our Nikon laser radar, and it stands for Accurate Precision Distance Scanner. So uh, key attributes of the APDIS are that it's long range. So um, yeah, we can go up to 30 meters or 50 meters. Um, it's fast, it's accurate, and it's non-contact as well. Um, and you can see in the background here, at the minute it's attached to a robot, hmm. but we can have it in a, a simple manual setup with a tripod or we can attach it to things like robots. Um, we can have it on lifters, use it with rails, turntables, and other hardware as well. It's got a, a mirror in the head unit here. Um, so we focus a, an infrared beam using the mirror, and then by uh, calculating the range and the, the two angles, so the um, elevation and the azimuth, we actually uh, get a, a point in 3D space. Um, right. Excellent. So it rapidly shoots a laser onto a surface and kind of reads that information back. Yeah, you can you can uh, point the laser straight at the object and it'll take a reading straight from the object. So there's no need for um, you know targets or part preparation really. Excellent. Are there any limitations on what you can actually measure, surface material wise or? Uh, wise? Surface material. So uh, one of the unique things about the APDIS is that we only need a really tiny return signal, mm -hmm. so we can measure highly reflective surfaces. Um, it's color independent, finish independent as well. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. See you in action. So what we have here is a program where we already have the CAD of our chassis imported. We have a load of reference targets already laid out on the vehicle, both in CAD and in real world. Uh, and obviously what we're going to do now is define some of these points. Now, uh, it's up to you how you want to actually align to your vehicle uh, or your CAD in this case. Uh, we could simply just measure these and align to the CAD using a traditional alignment technique. Uh, but in our case, we actually have a device position where we've actually defined all these reference spheres across the vehicle. As you can see here, we have our larger list of device positions, and we can just clock into a uh, realign to uh, our coordinate using a new device position. So what I could do here is actually create a new coordinate system, sorry, a new device position, and then connect to our uh, Nikon Razor LADAR. So here we have our list of uh, devices. There's only one available, so we connect. And this will bring up a new dialog zone, which will give us a variety of options to do um, well, different types of measurements. You'll also see there's a, a window pop-up here. This is giving us the actual video footage from uh, the laser radar. Uh, and on the left-hand side here, we can scan patches of areas. So obviously this, this system can uh, actually laser scan certain areas of the surfaces. It's not really designed for it, I don't believe, but obviously the idea is you can actually scan small patches um, for information. What we're interested in is actually measuring objects. So here we can actually manually measure objects which we'll have to do initially before we actually do an alignment. Um, so here we're going to define some device position targets. Uh, and you can see we're already aimed at one here. Now I can actually relocate or reposition the, uh, the, the laser and the camera by clicking on the screen itself. So you can see I can actually move around using the mouse clicks, or I can actually hold shift and control on the keyboard and use my arrow keys to actually move around as well. And then finally, F8 on the keyboard will actually focus the camera And then when we're ready, we can simply say start scan and it will do a couple of passes over that sphere to create a load of points to give us a device position target. And then what we'll do is move on to the next location. So again, as I move across, maybe refocus so I can see what's going on. So I've actually gone past the part there so let's refocus on the part itself. And you can see that's our target there. So we can actually click on that now, snap to it, and then scan again. 
and there's one more on the roof of the vehicle. So aim high, go across, and that's our third sphere there. So we only need three to line two. Ideally, we should clock into more. Obviously, the more the better, because at least you have redundancies to, uh, to use. So any bad ones you can always ignore and still have enough targets to align to. But in our case, we at least need three, which we have here. As soon as that happens, we are now aligned. We are now able to then um, add some measurements and actually go to those locations to measure with. So to show you what I mean by that, if I actually zoom into the side of the vehicle here, we can see there's a couple of uh, holes uh, and geometry there we, we can actually measure. So through Polyworks, you have the standard set of tools you'd, you'd normally use with any kind of measurement device. Uh, in this case, we're using features. So what I could do here is maybe create a uh, couple of features, maybe a slot, maybe a circle. And if I want, I can even create a plane. But rather than measuring the entire surface there, let's just create ourselves a small little patch. So what I could do is create a plane just by anchoring three points. So I can anchor three points to describe a plane on that surface there. Okay. So with those in there, um, the way this system works is it will actually go ahead and scan uh, the area and extract that information. So what I could do with that is just go into the properties of these to tell products how to extract them. So if I'm extracting a slot, I can right-click on properties, jump into my measurement tab, tell Polyworks I wish to extract them. Obviously, we're dealing with a thin edge here. So obviously, we'll use the trimmed method and then give it some uh, extraction parameters, so how far to search around the area and so forth. So we should be pretty accurate in our alignment. So we'll search around 2 mil. I should scan around the edges as well as extract our plane. Because we're dealing with just edge data, it'd be worth doing a, a min fit and it's probably worth turning off our max angle for filtering. And we have our filtering options for rejecting outliers. So apply that and we'll do the same for our circle as well. Again, tell Polyworks there to extract. We'll use trim data, probably search about two mil around the edge. We'll do a min fit and we'll turn off the max angle and use a standard deviation factor for reject outliers. And we could even do the same for our plane as well. But there's less to worry about in the planes. So again, extract. We have our search distance, which again, we can leave them for if we wanted to. There shouldn't be anything else in the area that we won't need to worry about. Best fit, reject outliers. Uh, we'll keep the max angle on this time, but apply and then close. Now, in terms of actually how it actually covers the area with data, we do have uh, within the scanning options, our options tool here. And you can see there's a variety of options available to us. So things like if I'm measuring circles, uh, there are quality settings, um, number of points, uh, passes, uh, where it actually passes it. So a 45 degree angle uh, and so forth. So a lot of these you can actually tweak and play with if you wanted to. There is even two uh, measurement methods. There's a Nikon method and an extract method, which is through Polyworks. So the Nikon method actually does all the calculations and stuff in the background, uh, uses similar extraction parameters, but it doesn't actually ultimately leave you any data behind. It actually just gives you the measured information and that's it. So there's no kind of traceability or analysis available to you post measurement, but extract keeps, gives you the raw data and lets Polyworks do all the work for you, i.e. the calculations, and it gives you the points to see, uh, so you can uh, further analyze the information if need be. So with that, I can then use my automatic option so with this automatic option, we have our point spacing, our line spacing, uh, and we can obviously specify what, data, specify what data or boundary data we're generating. Uh, so if I just highlight my features that I now wish to measure, I can simply hit start scan, and the system will automatically know where to go because we're aligned to it. And you can see there, it does its own little pattern to measure the points on a surface or around the edge of the hole. And then obviously Polyworks is able to extract the information to give us our results. Uh, and if I wanted to actually just manually scan an area, uh, what I could do with that is actually move the scanner to a, an area that, I'm, that I wish to scan. If I focus. I can then obviously go ahead and tell Polyworks to scan an area, giving a point spacing again, 
line spacing and the kind of width and height of the area that I wish to scan. In this case, it'll be a, a 10 by 10 normal to my view. So if I hit start scan at this position here, you can see there it just scans across doing a 10 by 10 patch, which you can see just in the background here. Okay, now that scanned horizontally, we could also change the angle of which it attacks, the, uh, it generates the points. So we could potentially turn that 45 degrees. And then if I scan that again, you'll notice the, the pattern that it actually scans that changes. And I'll kind of draw the lines diagonally rather than horizontally. And this system also allows us to measure additional items, uh, not just features, but I could also lay down some comparison points. So if I just add some comparison points by anchoring them, say those two points there. Again, with, our, with the system, I can highlight the two comparison points, use the automatic option here, and then start scan. And it should go straight to those points and measure those two points straight away. So obviously, um, that's your manual process, but what we could actually do to help kind of streamline the entire thing is actually include all this in a macro. Uh, the macro will actually allow us to run through multiple uh, sections of the measurements. This uh, cell actually contains uh, numerous positions where the robot can actually move the laser radio to. Um, so what we can actually do is uh, allow the macro to kind of run, pause, let the robot move, continue the program to measure the remaining uh, items, and all that can be um, uh, macroed in. So if I go ahead and run the macro, Everything should update and do a new piece. And from understanding what the, the beauty about the system is, um, correct me if I'm right um, or if I'm wrong, uh, Lucy, but there are two variants of these systems. There are, yeah. So we have our standard uh, version and we also have the enhanced. Um, and the main difference between those is the speed. So the standard has, a, it'll measure at 500 points per second and the enhanced is at 1,000 points per second. Um, so yeah, the, the speed difference. And then it also with the enhanced version, um, it will optimize the, the scan path. So it will actually move through the measurements in the most optimized way using our, our gauge and engine software. Um, and it means that it will you know, work out what is the quickest path to measure. Um, so you know, if your measurement cycle time is of mo the most importance, you know, you can really uh, take that down. Excellent. So yeah, so I believe what this macro does is actually selects a group of measurements and then just tells the system to go and measure it. But with this enhanced version, uh, as Lucy mentioned, it's able to optimize its path by rearranging the items in your tree to measure them in a certain order that would help speed up the process. Uh, and obviously that wouldn't be available with the standard version, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Um, and am I right in saying that there are two, uh, two further types per version? in terms yeah. of distances? So yeah, you can choose uh, between up to 30 meters or up to 50 meters in the measurement range, depending on what it is that you're measuring. So, you know, in uh, industries like aerospace, obviously they, they want longer range. Um, but yeah, in something like a, an automotive cell, you might not need that, that distance really. Excellent. So is there a min distance that you can capture? Yeah, so uh, the minimum offset is 0.5 meters. Um, and then yeah, it goes up to whatever range you've chosen on the, on the variant there. Excellent. And in terms of um, maintaining and using these systems, uh, obviously, uh, just like any other kind of uh, measurement device, you want to make sure you keep them clean. Uh, I'm assuming that there are mirrors and lasers, so keeping that uh, clean. But is there a maintenance? Um... Yeah, so we, we would recommend an, an annual calibration um, for the system. Um, and you can also carry out your own uh, checks as well. So there's a number of different checks that you can verify the system's working correctly with. Um, but yeah, um, we have uh, service engineers who are able to carry out calibration either at one of our offices or on site at your at a customer site as well. Excellent. And are there uh, any kind of um, uh, checks or calibrations that the customers can do themselves? Yeah, so within the, the toolkit um, provided by Nikon, you can actually carry out a, a number of um, verification tests um, that you could do you know, before you started for the day uh, to make sure that the system's working correctly, yeah. Excellent. Uh, and all those can be found within the uh, the scanning utilities within the uh, the scanning tools. Yeah. Excellent. And this macro uh, is actually running through each of these measurements. Uh, there is a report at the end, which will give us all the results um, that we've set them there. And this actually contains a combination of uh, scanning patch areas as well as doing feature measurements um, and point measurements in here. So uh, this actually has a, a nice combination of everything we need 
uh, that we can do with the system. And I, I'm already saying that Nikon will offer that uh, solution as well. If customers want a fully automated solution, you offer that? Yeah, we can do that. So um, so rather than just selling the unit um, you know, and, and leaving a customer to deal with that, we can actually provide all of the, the design if they want something specific designing, uh, we can do that. We can carry out the install. Uh, we can program everything and um, configure the pro programming for them um, yeah, and carry out any changes as well. And uh, could you use these systems, could you use multiple systems uh, in a cell? You can, yeah. So, um, you know, if you wanted to, again, with your measurement cycle time, uh, it needs to be really fast. Uh, you can have a number of systems rather than moving one system to various positions. Excellent. And in terms of this setup here, we've got a, a robot. Um, are we limited to, are the customers limited to which, which robots you can attach to? Or? Uh, no, no, we're um, independent of any specific robot. Um, and the, the actual accuracy of the unit as well is independent of the, the robot accuracy um, because we put back into the coordinate system using tool and balls. So um, yeah, we can use any of the, the robots. Excellent. Uh, the program's finished there. So obviously if I go into my reports now, we'll have some results in here, which we can check out. As you can see there, we have our snapshots with our measurements and tables of results. Obviously that's your standard PolyWorks utility, but obviously uh, now using it with a Nikon laser radar. Thank you. Well, thanks again, Lucy, for uh, having us over. Some really cool uh, kit that you've showed us. Um, but yeah, where can customers get in touch if they were interested to see more? Um, yep, so get in touch with me if you want any more information um, via, link, uh, via LinkedIn. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, by my email or by phone as well, yeah. Excellent. Uh, again, if you have any questions for us as well, please get in touch. Uh, feel free to contact, contact us via email, uh, telephone, or via our social media handles. Thanks.